Good morning. It's Tuesday, January 25th. And yes, it's Quam Day. Quam Day tonight, 6 to 7.30. Reaching out to the kids in the community. It'll be a, a good night, I'm sure. <clears throat> it's a little bit snowy this morning. I, uh, you know, Florida, they don't have to uh, shovel sunshine. I'm just saying, I get tempted every time it snows. Time to move somewhere warm. <laughs> uh, oh well. And then here in town, I'm not much of a townie either, but I don't know how long you have to shovel your sidewalks before you get a get a ticket. But I'm, I always try to get out there and and uh, um, get it shoveled, so I don't want to get a ticket. I also try to get it shoveled before my wife leaves, so that when she backs out, she don't pack it down, and then it makes it terribly hard to get it off the sidewalk. So and. So I've been outside this morning after devotions and after reading and then go out and shovel. And now the fat guy's sweating. <laughs> oh, well, that's a personal problem, right? <clears throat> if I wasn't so fat and out of shape, I'd look forward to this, but I don't. And, uh, oh, well, and this one's heavy. A lot of times if it's that real light, fluffy stuff, I take the snow blower or the, uh, wheat or the leaf blower out and uh, blow it off and makes it all nice. But I can tell you the dogs love it. They've been out there playing in that and just getting soaked and running around. But <clears throat> all right, well, it's pretty much a no news day today. <laughs> Other than I, uh, I found it interesting that um, uh, uh, the BDB had said that he would never bully the press, and then I don't know if you guys uh, saw it or not, but he uh, cussed out a reporter yesterday. Uh, so, yeah, he's uh, such the epitome of self-control and one who loves this nation. So, but <clears throat> that's all there is in the news um, today, other than. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Dwight. Yeah. You know, you're up there in Pennsylvania where there's all that snow. Why don't you go shovel some snow? <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, I I don't know. I'm not sure what uh, what the evil is up to today, but uh, the, the Lord definitely gave me some good reminders this morning and, and uh one of them was in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It came over my uh, my phone. I have a Bible app on my phone, and, you know, you, most of you probably have that, but um, pops up a verse every day that you can read. And the verse that popped up was 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And so I read it this morning, and I'm like, okay, that's a good reminder. It says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation." That's great, right? And so let's trust him. Let's stay away from it. Let's uh, uh, run from temptation and and uh, not give in to it. And But then it says, not only does he know how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. You know, that we, we watch these characters get away with stuff all the time and... You, you know, there, there's quite a battle going on right now up in D.C. on uh, that they, they want to make it illegal for politicians to exchange stocks. I think it's great. You know what? They get, I'm sure they get all kinds of insider information. And anybody else gets insider information and they uh, uh, go to jail, right, if they use it. And... Uh, also, on top of that, it just makes it so easy uh, for them to be bribed. And don't you know? I don't. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I think many of them have fallen prey to that. 
and uh, if not all of them at some point in time have have taken money under the table and oh they'd be all offended to hear me say that but sorry you, you don't you, you you don't go into that position and uh, get wealthy and uh, they do i mean it's just proven over and over they become multimillionaires while they're in there and uh so and that just it, all it does is just corrupt things and it's human nature you know it, that's human nature when they're around that kind of uh, temptation uh, most don't run and but the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under the day of judgment to be punished you see there's a day coming they'll, they'll get it and uh i don't uh, look forward to it but i i can rest in that and and uh, not let it uh, vex my spirit and make me walk around angry all the time because i know that uh, they'll, they'll get what they're doing if they don't change their ways. And I had another reminder here in, in Psalm 21, kind of went along with this. And first of all, he says in verse seven, he says, for the king trusteth in the Lord and through the mercy of the most high, he shall not be moved. And so this is David writing this and talking about himself. And in this king, he's saying he, he trusteth in the Lord and through the mercy of the most high, he shall not be moved. But then it goes on. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischief, uh, mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Therefore shall I make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing praise, uh, sing and praise thy power. Uh, and, you know, it, it just over and over and over, David was dealing with, people who were dealing with him unjustly. And, and uh, he knew, he, he just put them in God's hands and, and we need to do the same thing. And, and maybe you guys get tired of hearing this. I, I, I don't know, I just need to hear it every day. I do, with, with all the craziness going on, it, it just reminds me that whatever is going on, God is allowing it to happen. But if we walk godly, then we are, protected by God, and, and he's going to deliver us, and he'll use us, and, and there's nothing to be concerned about. And so it's just a, a really good reminder uh, for me uh, in that. And then I was an, another reminder, two reminders, but one of these was in Luke 5 when I was uh, reading um, uh, chapel this morning, and and. Uh, this is one that I really didn't like to see and read, but it's another reminder to me and uh, one that maybe we all need to hear. Luke chapter five, Jesus is calling his disciples, right? Well, we get to Luke chapter five, verse 27, and it says, and after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. So Levi, uh, Matthew, was a, uh, was a publican. So what he was, he was a Jew that had been hired by the Roman Empire to collect taxes for the Roman Empire. And they had a quota that they expected him to uh, uh, gather up among the people and what they would do is they'd tell him, whatever you gather above this is yours. So, I mean, here, here's your the epitome of bureaucracy, right? Here he is. He's a bureaucrat. He wasn't voted in by the people, all right? He's just, he's appointed by the, the politicians. He's appointed by the, the government of the day, which was the Roman Empire. And he went around and he, and he collected taxes. And they had an expected amount. Well, he raised the amount, and he, he he was a thief and a typical bureaucrat, right? And so, 
Uh, here he is. He's collecting and, and taking this. And, and then here comes Jesus. I mean, if I'm Jesus, it's a good thing. I'm not anywhere close to that because I come along, I'd probably put a big knot on Levi's head. And, uh, uh, but he didn't. And he calls him and, and Levi gave up everything and followed him. And it's just a reminder to me that even as angry as I can get at these characters, and, and, uh, and I do, but there is a possibility of, of some of them trusting Christ as our Savior. And, and we ought to pray for that. We, we ought to pray that they would trust Christ. I'm sure there were people that hated Saul. And, and they prayed that, God, you need to get rid of this evil guy. I mean, he is killing us right and left, and he's taking our property, and, and he's making our lives miserable. And, and, Lord, you need to deliver us from the evil. And, well, he did. You, you ever thought of that? God delivered them from his evil, not by killing him, but by saving him. And we, we should pray for the salvation of these people. And, and I don't like to hear that. I'm sorry I don't. I just want them to be whacked on the head and removed from office and put somebody else in there. And because sometimes we think that there is just no way possible for some of these characters to trust Christ. But with God, all things are possible. And I'm reminded of that. And and if I would, uh, I don't know, pray differently, I, I guess, you know, I, I need to pray differently. And, and, think differently and, and just uh, help my own attitude in these things. And, and uh, you, you know, we just need to, and, and I think it all starts with, for me anyway, is waking up in the morning and, and purposely having an attitude of gratefulness. I, I think that that's where it always has to start with me is I just need to start off the morning just thanking the Lord for what I'm grateful for, for, for what God is doing in my life and, and allowing me to, to, to experience in my life and, and truly to uh, just, uh, just have a heart of, of gratefulness. And, and when I do that, then it can help me to uh, understand more of, of the, the worldview in God's eyes and, and really to love people like, like God wants me to love them. You know, it, it's easy for me to love our church family. Some are a little harder to love than others. That's always the, the case. That's wherever we go, right? But you still love them. And it's wonderful. And, and I love that. And love our people. But here he tells us that we need to love our enemy too. And, and we need to love these characters and, you know, give them the gospel. And, and anyway, that was a thought that I had. And that, that one I... I didn't like so much, but you know, sometimes when when we put ourselves in the front of the perfect word of God, we see some things we just don't like. And uh, most of the time it's stuff that we don't like about ourselves. And, and it's not to get down on ourselves, but it's to change those things and uh, be more what God wants us to be. And, <laughs> excuse me. And then he reminded me, I, I love Matthew chapter 16. I have... Uh, uh, I don't. I, I preached on some passages in this, and and it's just really powerful. In in Matthew 16 and in verse 13, it says, "When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am?' And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets." He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That very faith that that Peter expressed, and and the recognition that Jesus Christ is the very God, and that 
by faith, we trust in that Savior who is God himself, Jesus Christ. And when we place our faith in that, that Jesus just said, I will build my church on that. And uh, how grateful we ought to be that it's not built upon man, that it's not built upon our works. It's built upon our faith in Jesus Christ. And, and then he says that, and I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I mean, God, God's got this. And you know what I found in all the trials and the, the craziness going on? More and more people have been looking and searching for answers. And, and look, it's not that we have a corner on the truth, but God does. And it's right here in his word. And, and the truth of it is, is that you need to believe on Jesus Christ, trust in him for the salvation of, of, of your soul and, and forgiveness of your sins. And, and, and with a repentant and humble heart, you come to him and, and you trust him and he saves you. And, and that's how he builds his church. And we need to get out and do that. We need to tell more people about, about Jesus. I had an opportunity to do that yesterday in the, in, in a funeral that I did. And, and, you know, we just need to take time to just talk to someone and, and invite them to, to trust Christ as their savior. So, you know, those, those are the thoughts that, and, and that, that God gave me today. And, and, uh, you know, he also shared some other things about just being totally committed to him. I mean, there's nothing better than committing our lives to him. And and it says this in verse 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And there's nothing better. And he says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And those he's talking about, they they see the transfiguration and some of those are going to see that and 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 uh talking about that but but how how important it is to to just be busy and be about the lord's work you know that there is coming a day that we as believers the the judgment of sin has been dealt with at the cross when you trust christ as your savior your sin has been dealt with the judgment of it but our works are another story and as believers, our works will be judged and they'll be thrown into a fire and only that which was done for Christ will last. And, and then we'll be able to, to cast those crowns and, and, and those rewards at the feet of our Savior. And that's what we need to do. Let's spend time. Let's be busy doing the Lord's work and, and telling people that there isn't anything better than, than knowing Christ and serving him and knowing that he's beside us all the time and that that he's got us. And so let, let's be busy doing the Lord's work and, and just watch God do great things. And uh, so that's, that's what I have today. It's a little quick. I got a meeting here soon. I got to finish shoveling before I go. And, and uh, so I need to get off of here, but guys, we have Quam tonight. And so I, I don't know that we're supposed to get a whole lot more anyway. So by tonight, that everything ought to be cleared off pretty good. And so uh, Quam tonight, and uh, we're going to uh, tell these kids about Jesus, right? And uh, so you guys have a great day today, and uh, if you don't have to get out today, enjoy the day, and read a good book, and have a good cup of coffee, and God bless you guys, and have a great day.